long, Luther. Oh, bear with me, sir. I will be ready in just one moment. Oh, take your time, monsieur. To better the deed were done well than done quickly. Oh, undoubtedly. Yes. <laughs> but I wouldn't wish to keep you in that costume longer than is necessary. Not in this heat. Oh, the heat, sir, doesn't bother me at all. I'm used to it. <laughs> I wonder who he is. I don't know. I don't think Grandfather knows who he is either. Jolly fearsome, though. Do you think he's real? Don't be silly. I've only dressed like that. Excellent, excellent. Now, sir, if you will be kind enough in your own good time to compose your features into a smile. I think perhaps a skull might be more apt. And uh, quite still. And uh, now. <laughs> Golly. Oh, 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 very good. <laughs> you right. How many times have you been told about peeping and prying? There's a man there, Millie, dressed as a devil. He's got horns and a tail and everything. Oh, I see indeed. It wouldn't come as no surprise to me if it weren't old Nick himself in person, neither. Coming to collect the pair of you for minding other folks' business. Where are you going, Millie? Shopping. This here changeable web rate now falls in consternation in the larder. Cook's had to throw out that there brisket we was going to have for dinner. And she ain't too keen on yesterday's cold addict, neither. I'm off to the butchers for alternatives. Come on, Phil. And I'd like to see you two in the nursery before I go. Go on. You won't. Millie. Why? Cook's... Cook's tending to her corns. Last thing she needs is you bright sparks are clattering around below stairs, so go on, up it. Shoo! <laughs> I trust you did not find the magnesium flashlight disconcerting. I'm never dismayed when I'm in the limelight. I only complain when I'm out of it. <laughs> it seemed apt for photographing Satan. It's one of these newfangled gadgets I don't normally resort to. It tends to frighten babies and old ladies. It has the same effect on them as lightning. Brief as the lightning in the collie's night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth. And there a man had power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. I beg your pardon? The dream, sir, act one, scene one. The immortal bard. Bard? Will Shakespeare. Oh, are you by any chance a member of the theatrical profession? <laughs> Courtney Elsmere, sir. Actor and tragedian. <laughs> Allow me to present my card. Oh, how kind. You have to break this vehicle quite so sharply. Sorry. I should hope so. Where's Spellbush? Let me out! Let me out of here at once! Not until you promise to be good. You're a disturbed cook. It is of little consequence to me, miss, if I disturb every cook in the neighborhood. I am registering an official complaint, and the more that hear me, the better! Let Do let, let him me out, out of this before someone Come comes. On. What's he officially complaining about now? He's so childish. He's cross because there's nothing for tea except yesterday's milk and stale caraway seed cake. Then he's right to complain. I don't like seed cake even when it's fresh from the oven. I hate it, I absolutely hate it. Just fish and be quiet. You'll be the one to suffer if anybody hears you. If the grown ups find you, they'll lock you up in some museum or something. Well, that couldn't be worse than seed cake. A museum, young woman, would be infinitely preferable to the indignity of a meat safe. Oh, don't be so pompous, Spellbush. Behave, you three. It's not our fault. 
We might be able to find you a little cheese. Uh, there could even be a pot of jam. Oh, well. Mm. Hmm? While I was incarcerated in the meat safe, situation we won't go into, I happened to observe some cold chicken. Ooh. Oh. I know to someone who ain't going to go hungry this particular tea time. <laughs> Good job I managed to get to the cake shop before he closed. I reckon your guardian angels must be watching over you all right. All this grand spread on top of your other bit of luck. What other bit of luck, Millie? Why, ain't the master told you yet himself? Hmm. Perhaps it's meant to be a secret. Perhaps it ain't for me to speak. Do tell us, Millie. Honestly, Millie, we won't be the word to anyone. Cross our hearts. Well, then. That there gentleman this afternoon in devil's clothing, would you believe he's a real live play actor, no less? Not only that, but he's appearing at the Tivoli this very week. Not only that, but he was so taken with having his portrait took. He's given your grandpa free tickets to tomorrow night's performance. Who is the pain? Oh, we ought to go. It's the pain tomorrow about them babes in the wood. Poor oh, little motherless mite. And that there gentleman's a wicked demon king himself. <coughs> Not only that, but it ain't a bench you sit on up in the gods. It's a proper box. Cooking me's to go as well. Spellbush, could I trouble you for the water jug? But why not? No, thank you. We've already dined. Thank you very much. But there's tea cakes, fruit cakes, scones, homemade lemonade. The rind off the Stilton cheese was quite sufficient for my needs, thank you. I had so much chicken, I couldn't eat another morsel. Brilka says that jam sandwich has quite filled me up. Oh, very well then. All right. We'll try and smuggle you into the pantomime. <laughs> but we're not promising anything. <laughs> 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 Is it? Will it be a fairy queen? Bound to be if there's a demon king. Will she fly? She might do. Some of them do, some of them don't. But he'll come whizzing up out of a trap door. Masses of red smoke and a terrific bang. Oh, it'll be really grand. Go to sleep. Bro, 
Broker? Broker, are you all right? You wish you'd tell me what's wrong. Broker! Spellbush! What? What's the matter? What? What, what, what happened? Um, what time is it? It's Broker. What? She won't answer me. What? What's the matter there with her? There must be something wrong with her. I don't know. Well, oh, goodness. Broker. Broker. What is it? Spellbush, come on. All right, come here, let me. Broker? Broker? It's me, Spellbush. What's wrong with you? Spellbush, I feel awful. I mean, really awful. Well, what do you think it is? Oh, do pull yourselves together. She needs a doctor. I'll be all right. I'll get over it. No, Piston's right. You have to see a doctor. I'll be all right. If anyone sees me, we're lost. Oh, don't all three talk, of us. Brilka. That doesn't matter. She must have some treatment. Don't listen to him. I'll get over it. I know I will. She's got to have a doctor. Look, Miss Philippa, I ain't no medical doctor. What did you say they was again? Them symptoms? Terribly hot, Lily. Aspiring dreadfully. And an awful, awful headache. And who is it, may I ask, what's suffering from this terrible affliction? My doll, Melissa. Oh, Melissa, is it? My word, that's serious. We'll have to get her to sort sharpish and that's a fact. <laughs> Two-tailed called Jonathan. Don't know. No, I don't think Millie knows much either. Fistrom. If those children don't send for a doctor soon, I'll set out for one myself. We can't fetch a doctor. Spellbush, it's up to them. No doctor, Fistrom. Are you sure? Positive. Fiston's right. It, it must have been the chicken. Mm. Well, I only touched the cheese. He had a jammy sandwich. Mm. Bilka was the only one to eat the chicken. Well, that's it then. We know what she's got. Chicken pox. Food poisoning. Food poisoning. Well, now we know what she's suffering from. How are we going to treat her for it? Philippa, you shouldn't. I had to, Gerald. It's the only way. Thank goodness Cook hasn't put it in the dustbin yet. Where are you going? To tell Grandfather. No, Gerald, please. You mustn't. Anyway, it's too late now. I've eaten it. I've got to touch what Broca's got and get some medicine for us both. If I hadn't done it, we'd have to get a doctor for her. Then they'd all be taken away and put in some horrid museum or a zoo or something. We must tell Grandfather. He could be very ill. You might. We must, Phil. He'll find out soon enough. If I catch it too. Can I hold your horse, Mister? No, 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 no. Can I hold your horse? No, 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 Mary. No, here we are. Here we are, Mister. That's it. Stop this! Goodness, you Phil. Yes, sir. Oh, 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 coming, coming. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Mr. Gustanton. How's the little one? Oh, she's up here. Must wait, Doctor. Thank you, Cook. Well, don't just stand there gawking. Come on, one way or the other. Oh, boy. Yes, Gerald, you better stay down here and I'll do keep out of the way. Yes. Uh, here 
There she is, Doctor. Oh, Poor little thing. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. oh, dear, dear. What's occasion this, I wonder? She comes and goes, Doctor. With us one minute, then tossing and turning, fit to burst as if her little life depended on it. And how long has she been like this? Oh, came upon her suddenly. She seemed in excellent health this morning. When she is awake, she keeps on murmuring something about food poisoning, Doctor. Food poisoning? Food poisoning? What would a child of her years know of food poisoning? What she keeps on muttering when she's conscious. Then, when it seems she's only half awake, it's Brenka. Brenka. All the time, this Brenka. Who or what is Brenka? I've no idea. As for this food poisoning, it seems impossible. I mean, Cook is extremely cautious. It's yet to be established, Mr. Gostanton. But if it is food poisoning, that's for me to diagnose. Now, open. That's the idea. Uh huh. Now we go. Over we go. That's it. Now. Mm. She's been all afternoon. What do you make of it, Doctor? Well, frankly, I haven't entirely reached a conclusion yet. <laughs> but is it food poisoning? She's certainly showing all the symptoms of the complaint, but there are other things, too. Anxiety of some sort or another appears to be aggravating the illness. It's nothing serious, is it, Doctor? I hope not, sir. Only time will tell us that. First things first, and the most important of those is to get the fever down, and that as quickly as possible. Now, I could do that all the quicker if I knew the source of contamination. I'd like a list of all the food she's eaten over the past 48 hours. Oh, I could write that down for you, Doctor. Good. I'm particularly interested in anything that no one else in the house has touched. Ah. Oh, poor little lamb. It is food poisoning. He caught it from eating some chicken. Are you sure of that, laddie? Chicken? We haven't had chicken. That chicken? Why, she shouldn't have touched that chicken. That chicken was only there to be thrown out. Never mind the whys and the wherefores now. Does this information assist you, Doctor? It certainly does. Are you any good at running? And you know the chemist's shop at the corner of Bridley Street and Fletcher Road? Yes, sir. Now take this here. Tell them from me that it's urgently required. All right, Broker. We're going to get you well again. There's medicine on the way. Thanks to Philippa. Yes, Broker. Thanks entirely to Philippa. it so smartly. Well, yeah, speaking of medicine, what time is it now? Just after 11. Miss Philippa? Miss Philippa? Time for your last spoonful before you settles down for the night. Hello. Uh, is Broker all right? Straight down in one. It don't taste no great shakes, Miss Philippa, but that only goes to prove it's good for you. <laughs> John. You are improving fast, young lady. And as for you, Master Gerald, you can sing your rock before your grandfather comes in and catches you. Go on, buzz off. Good night, Philly. Good night. Sweet one. Well, I'm blessed if I can understand it. What's that, Millie? Why, well, you ain't had no more than three doses out of this here, and it's half way down already. If I didn't know no better, I'd swear someone was nipping in and helping themselves to it. But who'd help themselves to medicine? I can't imagine, Minnie. Thank you, Fistram. Now then, Broke, I hope I you're not, not going to be awkward about, about this, it. because it's going to make you better. <coughs> now, come along, open up. Open up, open up. <coughs> Come along, open up, open up. That's better. There, you feel much better now, don't you? Mm. 
Yeah. It may be the same colour as Blumange Fistrum, but that doesn't mean it tastes like it. <laughs> Thank you, Fistrum. There you go. A full it's spoon all this right, time. Fistrum, that'll do. Come along, Broker. Broker, no, come along. You want to get better or not? Come you want to get better? It's come on, over. Over. I don't want to hear any arguments. Thank you, Mr. Garstanton. Thank you, madam. Good day to you. You said you wanted to speak to me, Grandfather. Uh, no, General. I was wondering whether there was something you wished to say to me. Very sorry, Grandfather. I'm glad to hear it. It'll never happen again. I should hope not to. You not only allowed your sister to eat rancid meat, you then chose not to advise me of the fact. The consequences could have been extremely serious. However, you seem to have learned your lesson. You have suffered some sort of punishment by having to forego the pantomime last night. Well, in the circumstances, we will consider the incident closed. That's all. Oh, Gerald. Uh, Gerald, the uh, lady who was here just now is an associate of Mr. Ellesmere. She's also appearing in the pantomime. By an odd coincidence, she has given me a complimentary box for next Saturday's matinee performance. Uh, and as I uh, cannot find it in my heart to punish you for the same thing twice. Well, Philip, will be well enough to go too, Grandfather. <laughs> the difficulty, I imagine, will be in attempting to dissuade her. Go on, off you go. Novels based on the Return of the Antelope series and written by Willis Hall are available from bookshops. There's also a picture book illustrated by Faith Jakes. Next, an Englishman, a Welshman and a Scotsman join Jim Bowen for Bullseye. <laughs> 